Hi, welcome to the second episode of The Manic Engineer. My name is Francois and today we'll be utilizing this little Dremel tool on the mini lathe and machine various things that you normally won't do on a mini lathe. Oh, that's great. 13 spanner will just fit fine. Not bad for the first timer. So, please join me when designing and creating the 3D printing components required to use this versatile Dremel tool and then stay until the end when I show you a few examples. To be able to machine with the Dremel tool, you need to bolt it to the mini lathe and we do that with a 3D printing part and we fit the Dremel tool to normally where the tool post is fitted to. Then we also need a, another component or another tool which is called an indexer and an indexer is there to orientate the workpiece on the lathe at different angles. With the top views showing we can see the workpiece, the chuck as well as the indexer. And this is the tool holder for the cutters that will be replaced with the tool holder for the Dremel. So first we remove the tool holder by loosening the bolt. Then remove the bolt that normally holds the tool holder. And this is now a large surface to bolt the tool holder of the Dremel against. This is what the Dremel tool holder looks like. It has a taper where the Dremel tool taper fits in. This is where the tool protrudes out on the other side. This surface interface with the compound surface and these two surfaces here register on the side of the compound. The tool holder is then mounted on the compound slide and attached with a screw from the top. Next, the Dremel tool is pushed into the taper from the outside and then tightened with a 3D printing nut on the inside. So this is a quick sketch to show how the Dremel will be orientated on the mini lathe. Let's start by drawing the chuck, sweat, what holds the tool or the object that you are going to cut or the workpiece rather. That's the center line. So this is the chuck and this is the workpiece. Now the Dremel, let's say we are going to cut with a cutting disc. We draw the cutting disc here and the shaft of the Dremel and then the body of the Dremel. On the lathe it will look like this. So we have now orientated the Dremel tool 90 degrees to the workpiece. So this Dremel tool can be moved in this direction both ways. It can also be moved in and out. So the first thing that I will show is how do you cut a hexagon on this round object. If you look in this direction, you'll see a shaft like that with a center line there. I'm going to draw this disc here. Here's the shaft and there's the body. If I move this disc inwards and end up, let's say, about there, and I move this disc into the object, I'm going to cut a slot into this object. In this view, if I move this Dremel this way, after moving it inwards like that, I'm going to make a cut here. I'm going to move the tool away, index, that means I'm going to rotate this part and I'm going to do the same. And by doing it six times, I end up with the shaft looking like this. So there's the six sides. This part here is normally the end of a bolt and you use a spanner over this flats to torque it or untorque it. Another thing you can do, if I just draw this chuck and the workpiece again, I have just a normal drill in the Dremel like that and I just go in, then I'll be drilling. There's the drill, there's the Dremel on this view. I'll be going in and drilling a hole into this object. You can also Take this Dremel and rotate it on the tool post to be an orientation like this. But you can also offset it. So let's draw it here in this orientation. And let's say this spot has got a large flange on it. Now I can come in in this direction. I can draw a hole at this specific radius here. After indexing, I can drill another hole. And at the end object, with many holes around the circumference, and that just by indexing it. So there are many ways to do cutting using a Dremel and an indexer. So initially 
I had a different orientation for this tool and I can still use it like that. Instead of this part sitting like this, I created this one to sit like this. But the reason why I'm not using this one at the moment is that there's interference between the compound wheel and the cross wheel. I will be using this is when I'm drilling holes in this direction onto a flange or doing some cutting around the flange. So what I will do now is just to fit this holder and to orientate the Dremel in this direction. So first press the button, remove the tool. Second is remove the nut that holds the Dremel. Next is release the screw. So this is then bolted on here like that. Now put the Dremel tool in, press the button and then fit the nut Press the button, torque it. Now it's possible to cut with the orientation of the cutting disc small grooves in the workpiece or perhaps part it off. So let's recap on the Dremel tool holder design parameters. Ensure Dremel tool center matches the lathe center in height. Make the tool holder bulky and use lots of area to make it rigid as possible to compensate for the low stiffness of plastic. This is the reason why it's not fitted as a tool on a tool holder, as many do. Utilize the same hole used for the tool post to fit the Dremel tool holder with a short M8 bolt. Utilize the side surfaces of the compound slide to register the tool holder accurately. Utilize the taper of the Dremel to pull it into the taper of the tool holder with a nut. Minimize slashing between cross slide wheel and compound wheel. Make it easy to assemble and to disassemble and provide the tools to do so. On the side of the mini lathe, we have this safety protective cover for the gears. This cover is now obsolete and will be integrated with the indexer. Removing the cover, we have access to the spindle shaft at the top. The spindle shaft is connected to the chuck on the other side. This gear will be fitted onto a 3D printing part that interfaces with the inside of the spindle shaft. It's connected to the inside of the spindle shaft with this taper collet. This taper collet gets pulled into the 3D printing part and then expanding the legs outwards. These legs then pushes against the inside surface of the spindle transmitting the torque. The 3D printing part has fingers that engages with the nut on the spindle shaft. The gear is then fitted onto the collet shaft. and an extended washer and bolt fitted. The top 3D printing part is then secured with two bolts. The plunger and spring is then inserted from above. And the two-legged pin fitted into the slots of the lid as well as the casing. Lastly, the handlebar is fitted to the plunger. This is the thread cutting gear to do the indexing with. At the top we have a spring loaded plunger. By lifting the lever we can remove the grey part which is a safety barrel for the plunger to now drop in between the teeth of the gear. By lifting the plunger we can rotate the chuck and drop in the plunger between the next two teeth that's marked on the gear. Once finished with the machining, the safety barrel can be replaced again and now the chuck is able to rotate freely without interference from the indexer. So you saw the 42 number on the gear, that means 42 teeth. If I'm going to use this 
gear for indexing and uh, let's say I take 360 degree divided by the 42 in this case B I will get a funny looking angle of 8.571 degrees which is difficult to do calculation with if I change a variable from let's say 1 to 14 and uh, that means I'm going to count the number of this angle so I take this value and I multiply it with the variable of i these are the angles I will get after counting this number of teeth so 7 teeth I'll get 60 degrees and I can mark it on the gear if I do 14 I'll get 120 degrees it's much better to work with how many times this angle will fit into 360 degree and this is what this column is so if I go 60 degrees every 7 teeth I can do that 6 times around 360 so I can only work with these whole numbers here repeating that for all the other gears we get this table from the table there are only a few numbers that can't be indexed between numbers 1 and 30 but they are normally not used following a few parts being cut with the Dremel tool The remaining outside pieces will now be removed with a lathe. Cutting a slot with the end mold cutter and doing about 250 microns per pass, showing double speed. This shows the slot after milling about 5 millimeters deep. Using indexing, drilling 6 holes into the end face. Making a deep thin cut the thickness of the disc, in this case one millimeter. So this is the last example. This is a dial for the compound slide. I'm removing the old one because the design requires a new dial to get rid of the play. Now for every revolution of the handle you go in one millimeter there are 40 marks around the current dial that means one millimeter divided by 40 is 25 micron so this is a thousandth of an inch every mark and to do that I'm indexing using the indexer and I'm just scribing with this tool against the surface I'm really happy how the markings came out. One dot represents 250 micron or 10 thou and two dots double that and so forth. Well, that's the end of episode two. That was a nightmare of editing. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm learning the software and um, takes a long time. Um, I hope you liked it. Please um, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers from the Manic Engineer. Bye.